Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Open Gate. Hello. A little technical difficulty here. Yeah, I think you're on. All right. So we're glad to see you this morning. Glad to be here. God bless you guys for being here. We want to open up this service this morning. We're going to sing a few songs before we do that. Let's lift up the Lord in prayer. Let's bow our heads and pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we're gathered here today before you, Lord. We pray that your spirit just move among us, Lord, as we worship together. Lord, that you feed us your word and we learn and we grow with you every day. Lord, we just open up our hearts and souls to receive from you this morning as we sing our songs and praise to you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing us all together on this beautiful Sunday morning. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's stand together. Hope everybody is doing wonderful this morning. June, summer, hot, high electric electricity bills, yes. <laughs> Wearing shorts. <laughs> School is out. The kids whom you love so much are with you every day. <laughs> you just can't wait for the kids to be hanging out with you every single day, every morning, every afternoon, every evening. You got to feed them breakfast. You got to feed them lunch. You got to give them snacks in between. Let the joy flow of summer. <laughs> Well, when we come to the, when we come to church, a gathering, we're, we sing praises to the Lord, and um, it must. Let me just encourage you: the joy of the Lord is our strength. Whose joy? Whose joy? He will give it. If, you, if you're lacking in joy, it's okay. You've come to the right place. The joy of the Lord it comes from the Lord. So. Sometimes we don't have the joy, but as we focus on Jesus, what he's done for us, the joy begins to bubble up. And you can love those kids. You can love your family. You can love this heat in spite of how you feel. God is the source of our joy. So because of that, we're going to praise the Lord. You ready? Let's praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. All right, come on. Welcome back, Ross. You've been away for a couple of weeks. Yeah. In your prayers. Bad hat breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say it again. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. Help us out this morning. I praise when I'm sure. Praise when I'm doubting.
praise when you feel it and praise when you don't. There's a message in that this morning. I'm going to tell you right now, when you praise God through the bad times, he teaches us that, you know, no matter how bad or how hard it might be, no matter what's coming against you, I'm here to tell you this morning that nothing can stand in the way of you and God, you and your Savior, you and Jesus. He's bigger than anything. He'll move any mountain that you're facing this morning. I'm here to encourage you. Praise him in the good. Praise him in the bad. Let's sing this.
stand in the gap for the drug addict, the prostitute, the doctor, the lawyer, the one that's got it all together, the one that has it all messed up. We have to stand in the gap this morning, my brother, my sister. Are you guys ready? Let's sing it again. Get up out of that grave. Ready? Sing. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up. To the east. Get up out of that grave. Tell him. Say it. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up. To the west. Get up out of that grave. It's time to. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Okay, here we go. To the south. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up. And the last one. Get up, to the north. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know about you, but have you ever felt like you can't even get out of bed? Have you guys ever felt like that? There were times this past three, past three weeks I had felt like I couldn't even, I had to crawl to work. And I'm telling you this morning, when we cry and we call on the name of Jesus, when we say, Lord, I can't do it. Father, you've given me a story. You've given me a testimony. The enemy wants to attack your testimony. He wants to, I don't know if you know this, but the enemy, he wants to destroy all that God has done in your life. It's not about person to person. It's not what we're facing here on earth. It says in the Bible, we're facing things of higher. This is a war going on between good and bad, okay? And the enemy wants to take us out. He wants to take us out of the game, and he wants us to, to take our name and just put it in the dirt. I'm telling you this morning, your testimony is going to, who was it? Um, oh, Nancy said, Dad, you know, why, why do we, uh, you know, why do you tell people about your, you know, without, you know, the drug? Aren't you embarrassed? I said, no, Nancy. I said, you know, this is, this testimony, your testimony, this is what's going to help people get to the other side. It's going to help the drug addict. It's going to help the prostitute. It's going to help the one that's, whatever you're going through. Let God use your testimony this morning, whatever you're facing, to help somebody out there, to help the drug addict, to help the loner, to help the one that's got it all together this morning. Anybody got a testimony this morning? Let's sing about that testimony. He's got a testimony. Come on. I got a story. It's a good to hide. I was a blind man wandering until I saw the light. I've got a story I can't deny. I'm a living, breathing miracle. I just gotta testify.
Anybody believe that this morning? Yes, Lord. Thank you for your love, Lord. Unbelievable. All right. Amen. It's so good when you focus your attention on Jesus because it helps you to look away from yourself, the problems, the difficulties, the trials, the testings. We all have them, don't we? You know what? Let me just tell you something in case you haven't realized it yet. They're not going away. We will have them. And all of these, our old nature is there to show, to try to focus our attention on us and the circumstances, the problems, the trials. Because they loom large. They can loom large. But Jesus is larger. Jesus is bigger. Jesus is more beautiful. He is consistent. He is not up and down like you and I are. He is not here like a, and then gone like a fair weather friend. He is faithful. He is true, and he is full of mercy, grace, and truth to lift you up and to encourage you. That's who our Jesus is. So if you find yourself in a little rut, if you find yourself in a little valley, let me just encourage you. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Just close your eyes for a few moments. Our physical line. Just picture Jesus. He's your coach. He's your encourager. He's your advocate. He's your lawyer. He's standing in the, on your side. He is. He's your savior. He's lifting you up. He's presenting you to God the Father. Look at my son. Look at my daughter. Look at my the saints of God. I've washed them. I've cleansed them. Here they are. He makes everything beautiful. He's making you beautiful. He's making you stronger. He's embracing you while others have turned away. He will never turn away from you. He will embrace you right where you are at.
to see them in the house of the Lord. If you don't know them, go to introduce yourself to them.
Hát. Good morning again to everyone that made it out this morning. Welcome to Open Gate Church again. We hope that you do feel welcome here this morning. And um, thank you to the Lord for how he leads our steps. He's guiding us. He's our shepherd, leading us to where we need to go, where we need to be. And so we thank God that he is leading us. He's directing us. And... Um, he has been faithful to us. He's, uh, his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And he's always leading us to him. Isn't that cool? That he's always leading us to where he is. And so, um, and with that comes refreshing. I hope you have been refreshed this morning, as worshiping the Lord and just experiencing his, his, um, his presence. He encourages us. Um, you know, last weekend, last Saturday, we were able to go to um, uh, Mill Creek Park and minister to some of the folks that are out there that are um, that don't have housing, uh, that struggle, um, you know, with different different things. And so we were able to go out there and minister and just be um, provide love provide grace, provide mercy, and all of these things, we don't have them ourselves. We've received them from the Lord, and then we're able to give them to others around us. And so um, what do we do? Um, we find the folks that are the thirstiest for these things. Jesus did the same thing. You know, he went to whoever he went to the untouchable. You know where the, un the untouchable were in his time and day? The, they were the ones who were the, um, they had leprosy. They had leprosy and according to the religious culture of that time, they could not interact with anybody because it was extremely contagious. And so what they would have to do if you were, they walked around a lot, right? They didn't have no vehicles. And so when they would walk down the street, you know what they would say if they saw some people coming? They would scream out, unclean, unclean. So they would avoid them. And um, they, nobody could touch them. If anybody touched them, they would cause the other people to be unclean. And so then they had to go through a whole ceremony, a whole process to become clean again. They couldn't go to the temple. They couldn't interact with others. And so these people that had leprosy could not be touched. They couldn't be embraced. They couldn't be hugged. So they were starving, literally starving for affection, human touch. You know how God created us? He created all of us to have human touch in our lives appropriate human touch you know and when this infection came would come upon people and they were established as unclean many people would be depressed because they you know they would they would literally die alone nobody knew that they were dead oftentimes until they checked from afar on them and they realized, wow, they're no longer with us. They died. They succumbed to the disease. 
And then there was a whole process they had to go through to process the body. You know, I, it reminds me of the, the, the story of, um, do you remember when Princess Diana died? Do you remember when that happened? It was a big news. Um, everybody was in mourning. And um, it was a tough thing, yeah. You know, it, it got my attention, but it, that, what, it was plastered all over the news. Uh, but you know who else died that same day? You know who it was? None of you know. Because sometimes there are personalities and emphasis that we humans put on different things that sucks the air out of the room. You know, in sports, if, if you have a personality like that, you know what we call them in, in, on the team? Ball hogs. They hog the ball. It's like they don't want to pass it to nobody. They're like, I'm going to shoot because it's all about me. They, 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 they take up all the attention. They take up everything. You know, there, there are people that live life that way too, right? He's like, oh, here they come. I'm not going to be able to get a story in because I'll tell my story. And then now my story is lower than theirs. And theirs. that ain't nothing. You should hear what I tell, tell you. And now my story is here. And... Your story is way up here. So you got some, something, there are personalities and there's a human condition that we sometimes gravitate towards that. But you don't, you don't know who died that same day, do you? You know what it was? Mother Teresa. Yeah. And guess what she was known for? Helping people not be healed. She, although she ministered to a lot of many people, she ministered to the leprosy stricken people in India. And the reason why she was called to do that was because she wanted to be an instrument that allowed these people to die with dignity. Because many people were left on the roadside because of the culture and they, would, they were still alive but there would be bodies all over the place that were stricken with leprosy and they had all this infestation of other things in their bodies and they were just, people were just waiting for them to die. And you know what she would do? She trained all of her nurses to do this. We're gonna go around the city and all the slums and all the places where all these bodies are, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna pick them up and we're gonna bring them back to this place that we establish where we minister to them, we pray for them, we care for their, um, all of the sores and all the, all the disgusting stuff that happens when you have rotting flesh and the smell. And what we're going to do is we're going to pray for them and we're going to help them die with dignity because there was no, um, they don't have any um, vaccine or any kind of medicine that will heal them from leprosy. So literally, this is what they would help them do. They would help them die with dignity. And many nurses would go there and they would be crying because they were like, how can I, do, I can't do this. It's just impossible for me to do this. And she would just say, hey, with the help of God, God will help you do. If you really, because many nurses would, and people would come in, to India and they would try to go there and say, this is what I want to do, I want to do. And they would get there, they'd be too overwhelmed. They'd say, I can't do it. And they had, she had to teach them spiritually that this is, if you're not called to do this, then you don't be here. God will, if you're called to do this, God will equip you to do this. And so this is what she was known for. This little old lady, Hungarian lady, wasn't even from India, went to this place and ministered to these people who were dying, giving them dignity and just seeing them suffer, but loving them right where they were at. You know, Jesus, she was following the same thing Jesus did. You know, Jesus, when, when the leper, the, uh, there was a leper who was walking on the road, came to him, you know what he did? Him being a rabbi, him being a religious leader, he went over to him, to the leper, and he touched the leper and healed the leper, but he touched him with his hands. And if you touch uh, somebody that has leprosy, you're gonna be unclean too. But Jesus is not afraid of unclean stuff.
he will affect our lives. He will affect, he will go against all the culture. The culture says, the religious culture, the, the rules said, do not touch a leper. And just, you know, Jesus, he don't, he don't abide by our rules. I'm going to touch him and I'm going to heal him. I'm going to minister to him. That wasn't the only one he touched. He touched many, many people he's, he's touched that were unclean. God is touching you and I, and this is the reason why we minister to who we minister to. Society's throwaways. Society has thrown away a lot of people. I remember when, um, when we were first um, uh, coming together as a church, we were still youth, uh, we are still maybe, probably not even a year old, and we were doing ministry out at the, the river and, and different places. You know, we don't just, that's not the untouchable. Sometimes, sometimes there are people that are they're lawyers and doctors and that are all cleaned up. And they are hiding in their little untouchable cave that nobody knows about. They think, you know, the shame and, and, and they're just the inner prison that they're inside of. And they try to build this facade all around them to try to say, this is me. But they know who they really are. Well, um, you remember this, Maria? Um, Maria is the one that co helps coordinate um, uh, sort of uh, the, the, min the ministry to um, the parks and, and the lost. And she organizes all of our resources with her family and friends to get everything ready. And so thank you for doing that, Maria. But you remember? Thank you. Uh-huh. And um, do you remember when we were a little weary because ministering it's it can be tiring do you know that were you tired was anybody tired that went this past weekend a saturday and after the, the after that day were you tired <laughs> some of us were beat you know because it's, it's it's hard it, it, I mean, it takes you're not just giving out stuff you're also praying and asking god to help you step in where he wants you to help and your flesh you know, it's like you, you got to die to your flesh because your flesh is like, I don't want to do that. I want to do whatever I want, when I want, how I want, if I want. That's, you know, when, when we're like that, then, you know, we're, we're not exhausted at all because the flesh is just doing whatever it wants to do. But when you die to your flesh, it is exhausting. So we had been doing some stuff, and I, re, I, don't, I, I don't know if you remember that you don't even know what I'm going to say because I did not tell you about this, but um, we were ministering, and then... We, we would take breaks and um, and um, Maria was in a uh, she was a juror and she was um, in a case I'm not going to get all into the case but she was there oh lord why am I here you know I got to be in this case and stuff and the one of the witnesses came up and she was talking she was struggling to be a witness guess what she was she was a homeless gal, a gal who was struggling with addiction. And as she was sitting there, she was like, Lord, I know why you have me listen to this woman. This is, I need to get out there. There are more people just like her that I need to re we need to reach. We need to minister to. And so the Lord was just giving her more encouragement, more strength so she could commit to being salt and light to whoever God has called us to, to reach. You know, we don't, it, it, it doesn't matter. You know, sometimes people, you know, think, well, because you're doing that, I need to do all that. God's got somebody that you need to minister to. Whoever it might, could be your coworker, could be a friend, could be a family member, somebody that's not, you know, doesn't have to fit all those um, symptoms of whatever is going on in society. You just got to be obedient. You know, one of the things that uh, was asked to Mother Teresa, she says, you know, because... She had made an impact in the world and um, um, really affected, affected a lot of people. And some of the people would interview her. She was, you know, a lot of people would want to get her attention and interview her. So they, one of the people said, hey, Mother Teresa, how can you explain, how do you describe how you've been so successful all these years, all these decades, time in and time out. You just, this little old lady, and here you are really doing all this stuff. How do you describe how you got this success? You know what she said? Instantly, she said, you know what? She's really very um, 
full of authority. She said, you know what? God didn't call me to be successful, just faithful. I don't know what you want to call that. I don't know what you, success, that's nothing. All God called me to do is do this, and I'm going to be faithful. And this is all that we're called to do, be faithful, to tell people about Jesus, and he's able to change. You know, there are some people, um, we're ministering to them, and they don't realize that they need to change, huh? Is that true? You remember being there? Hey, I'm good. I'm fine. You know, all, all hell is breaking loose all around us, you know? We don't even realize that we're blind. We're blind to it, you know? And then God sort of corners us, shepherds us, and he's like, hey, look it. Things are a mess. You realize this? Yeah, you know. Um, and then we respond to him, and we come to him, and, and um, he, we, we experience his grace and his mercy. And in fact, do you know, you being able to see what's really going on in, in your life, it's a healing. God's healing your, your, your eyes, helping you to see things accurately and showing you not because he wants to be mean to us, but he's saying, look, this is where you're at, but here's where you're, I can take you to where you really need to be. It's going to be a blessing, but you got to sort of admit and see where you're really at. You know, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Can you say amen to that? That's not because I said it. That's not because you say it or some church says it or some authority. It's because the Bible tells us this. The word of God, it's a true and accurate statement. And so all of us are in need of a savior. And so thanks be to God, that's the only way we can experience the grace of God, the mercy of God. We sort of, it's sort of making room for the love of God to come and hit us right where we're at. If some of us, you know, let me just say, you know what leprosy um, is a symbol of? You know what it is? Sin. In fact, some of us, we don't see our sin as leprosy. But let me just tell you something. You know what it is? It's leprosy. And it gets worse and worse. We know this, right? When you go, I know this in my life personally. As I've sinned, as I've hurt people in my family, hurt my loved ones, hurt my friends, the people that I care about the most, I've, when I allow myself to walk in the leprosy, it hurts people around me. I lose relationships. I lose communication. I become isolated, just like a, a person with leprosy. But thanks. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord that he touches me right where I'm at and he heals me. He puts his hand on my shoulder and he says, listen, you're infected, but I'm your healer. I am your healer and I'm going to help you. I am not running away from you. I will touch you right where you're at. And my hand is pure. It's clean. And I'm not afraid of you infecting me. In fact, I'm so powerful. My grace and my love and my mercy is going to affect you. And it will change your life. It will bring healing to you. That's why we do what we do. Anybody want to say anything about um, that went out last week and ministered and, and, and just testify a little bit about what you saw or what you felt or what you observed, what you experienced? Anybody want to say anything? Beautiful. Awesome. That's awesome, Nicole. You know, you know what I remember? Uh, we were, I look at some old videos when we first start planted the church. It was during COVID. And you know what? You guys were there just walking through. I remember all of that, you know? And, and you know, I remember you guys eating the donuts and coffee. And, and you guys were just being in a place where, you know, yeah. God, God is so good. God has been so good 
you know, the relationships and the talking and all that has just been beautiful. And um, are, are you, uh, Nicole, let me ask you a question. Are you perfect? That's right. We're not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but God is gracious, he's loving, he's helping us right where we're at. It's so beautiful. Anybody else want to say anything? Okay, Maria, come on. Or I'm going to have you talk in the microphone so that way other people can hear. Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, you know what? We were so blessed to be going out there. And, you know, this morning... I didn't even recognize Nicole. And I've known her for a long time, but I looked, I'm like, there's a new sister in church today. And then I looked at her again, I'm like, that's Nicole. But that's what God can do to you. He can change you if you allow him to. And that's what God showed me, that he's changing her. And it all happens in the heart. And don't think that you have to just wait for when we go or when you know, uh, there's an outing. But go to your neighbor. There's people all around here that are hurting. And God has put us in certain places at certain times to minister to people. Use that opportunity to do it because God has given you that gift. And you may think, I don't know what to say. Honestly, I don't know what to say either. But God tells me what to tell them. Just be open. And allow God to use you because he wants to use everyone, not just me or, you know, people, certain people. He wants to use everyone if you allow him to use you. Oh, you would be surprised. Amen. Right on. Beautiful. Right on. Right on. Yeah, we're... Oh, Esther. I just wanted to remind you of the, the gentleman, Mateo, that we saw at the outreach that we did, had done that in February, that had, uh, we don't know what happened, but he had a head injury, and he had that blood clot that was there. And uh, we prayed for him, that, 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 that outreach. And he came back this time, and he was healed, and he kept saying, you know, you prayed for me. He kept saying that he remembers that you specifically told him that that uh, blood clot be healed in the name of Jesus and be gone. He goes, look, he goes, anybody that says that there's not a God, he goes, I'm here, you know, to witness. He goes, and I'm healed, look. And he was just overjoyed. And we took pictures with him just rejoicing that God healed him from that. And it, it, the hair had grown and he had no uh, injury anymore. And then I was, I was talking to uh, them, greeting them coming up. There was a young man that caught my eye that there was just something about him that, you know, I wanted to you know, to know more about. And I asked him his name, and that didn't ring a bell until he said he was from Delano. I asked him the family name, and we knew the family, so then I called Charles over, and uh, this young man, I'll let you tell him. You ministered to him, the young man. Yeah, the young man had been uh, a, a cast away from his family, and, and I knew everybody, his grandfather, his aunts, his uncles, everybody. And uh, I was able to place a call to one of the cousins, uh, one of the aunts, and they said they were going to come and see if they can find him you know, and bring them back home. So I haven't heard anything, but I know that God's got this uh, in his hand. But And we prayed with him, and, and uh, he admitted that he need, needs help, and he wants out, and he wants to go home. But, uh, well, what, I know there's going to be a mighty testimony behind this. Yeah. God is bringing families together, and the enemy wants to separate families. He wants to create separation. God wants to bring families together. Isn't it beautiful how um, even in, uh, where families have been separated, we've seen God bring families together? I mean, I'm, it's just, it's been so amazing. Um, you know, I've had many testimonies in, in my past where God has brought relationships back together. It's so beautiful. God is reconciling. And, you know, God has to do that. God has to do that work. It's a, it's a miracle. Um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save the announcements till, till the end, but let's jump into the Word of God because um, there's, a, there's something to be said about the unity of Christ and the unity that the Spirit is, is putting together um, on our behalf. So um, open your Bible to Ephesians chapter 4. And um, 
we learned this in uh, John chapter 1, that um, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word, in verse 14, says, and the Word became flesh. And so one of the things that we were reminded is when we spend time with the Word, we're spending time with... When we want to spend time with Jesus, we spend time in the... You see? See how that is? When, when we understand that, we're not reading concepts. We're not reading, you know, just information. We're learning about a person. And so when we read God's word, this is what it's all about. So let's go before the Lord in prayer and let's have him teach us today. Lord, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for your grace and your mercy and your wonderful word towards us, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that you embodied all of the word in written form. And you contain even more than that because you're so, you're the king of the universe. You fill all and you're in all and you're flowing through all of us, Lord. And so we just pray that that would be impact, that that would have an impact in our lives, that your word would speak to us right where we're at. In your name we pray. And everyone said, all right, verse one, chapter four, verse one, the prior chapters, chapters one through three have been talking about everything that Jesus has gotten for us on the cross. Everything, the blessings, the, it says in, in verse uh, in, the, in chapter 1, he says, We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm or in heavenly places. Say every spiritual blessing. That's what you got. What do you have? Oh, that's what you got. Not according to me. Not according to you. According to the word of God. This is what we have. This is So... What Paul is talking about throughout Ephesians in the first three chapters is what we have in him, what Jesus got for us. And, you know, he, Paul was given a ministry to minister to the Gentiles. And you know what his ministry was? To preach the boundless riches of Christ. <laughs> Can you say that? Boundless riches of Christ. What was his calling? To preach the boundless riches of Christ. You know that's what you got? When we have Jesus, we have the boundless riches of Christ. And now, one, you know, let me just let me just say a little bit of, um, give you a little bit of a secret behind how you, how a cook puts together food. Okay, the chef, Jesus, the master chef, not ratatouille. No, 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 no. Not Chef Boyardee, but Chef Jesus. He puts together these books. What's the Bible mean? What does the name, what does the word, the Bible mean? You know what it means? Okay, that's an acronym of what can it represent. But the technical term for what the Bible means is, called, is from the word biblios. And you know what that means? A collection of books. Did you know that? It means a collection of books, and that's what the Bible is, a collection of writings that were inspired by the Holy Spirit, by men. Men wrote it down. Different parts of the world, different languages, different backgrounds. And so when God puts it on the heart of man to write something down, it's a book. Paul was inspired by the Word of God to write to the Ephesian people in a letter from prison, and he's writing these things that he feels it per pertains to them. Now, basically, it's a meal. Let me just tell you something. Some people, some pastors, some teachers, um, make it their thing to preach on a topic or make it their thing to preach on a subject or to preach on just a character or just a concept. Okay, which is okay. It has its place. Okay. However, the way a, the book, the Bible is put together, put together with books, with a bunch of chapters, with a bunch of paragraphs, with a bunch of sentences that has a continuous point. So when we study here at Open Gate Church, we study a whole book at a time. What was it? You remember what the first book we started with when we started Open Gate Church? 
Remember what the book was? The book of Acts. That's right. We started with the book of Acts because we wanted to show this is what the church should look like in the beginning. This is what it looked like in the beginning. This is the way we should look like. We're the church of God, you know. Then we went to Galatians. Now, here's the difference between us and many other people, many other places. Um, sometimes, here's what, let me just tell you a little secret of how people preach. Whatever's going around in the society, or whatever's going around in the family or a problem, the pizza, you know what they do? There's a problem here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to preach about it. Yeah. Oh, look at that news, look at that news um, uh, article. Oh, you know what? I'm going to preach about it. Now I'm going to preach all this stuff. So they're literally reacting to this world. Okay. Let me just tell you something. The world doesn't change you. You change the world. You are not a thermometer. You are a thermostat. You don't measure what's going on in this world by what's going on in this world. We measure by what God is telling you to do. And so when we teach the word of God, we follow it chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And guess who's the chef? Not me. Jesus. So he knows how much to put a little bit of Tabasco, a little bit of paprika, a little bit of salsa over here, huh? We're going to cook it. Some cumin, that's right. Get some cumin, whatever. <laughs> so I want to put some parsley in there. No, no, no. Put some cilantro, you know. <laughs> and I want to put some lemon. No, put some lime in there. <laughs> you see, God is the chef. And he knows how much needs to be in a message. He knows when it needs to come in. He knows what we need, when we need it, how much we need it, if you need it. Somebody say amen. amen. God is putting the meal together. And so I'll tell you what, I've been so many times, I've gone to um, uh, 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 pastor's gatherings, trainings and seminars, and they're always stressed out. I'm like, what are you guys all stressed out for? You don't understand. When I get back, I got to preach a message. You don't understand. You know, like one of the descriptions that, that preachers put out there to make it look like it's, you know, what they're doing, it's, it's, it's amazing, it's, it's, it's stressful to put a message together. You know what they say? It's like giving birth to barbed wire. I was like, calm down. <laughs> They're all stressed out. It's like, yeah, you got it. No, 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 no. The last time I was at a seminar and I, they, you know, I was at a church planting deal and there was a few guys that had been there and, you know, they told me, he says, oh, so what are you, you, you're here. You seem all relaxed. What are you going to preach on this Sunday? And I told him exactly. We're going to preach on Acts 13. Da, 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 here's what's going on. Da, da. They're like, they're like stopped dead in their tracks. I'm like. Because I don't decide what I'm going to preach on. The Bible decides what I'm going to preach on. This is what we commit to each book. All scripture is given. All of it is good for rebuking, for teaching, for doctrine, for helping, for encouragement, for instruction. All of it's good. These are just one book at a time. So now, you know, I don't have no stress. I already know what we're going to preach on next week, the following week. And you know, we're in throughout our season as a church, we will sprinkle in topical things. You know, old, some things from the Old Testament. Well, it, but the, the, the bulk of what we take in and the amount of what we take in is from the Word of God. God decides. Let me just tell you something. This is the way we live. You know, a lot of people live this way. They, the Bible is beneath them. And they dictate what the Bible, what they're going to preach on, what they're going to talk about, what they're going to minister on, because it's their little pet whatever, doctrine, theology, whatever. Is what they, you know, they heard a, a really good saying, they really, a really good uh, messenger or whatever, and like now they're, now they're just regurgitating. Look at, look at, this is what I heard, and I'm going to tell you this. Isn't that good? No, 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 no. You need something fresh, and you will get something fresh as long as you live this way. The Bible is above us. The Bible is dictating us. The Bible is changing us. The Bible is transforming us. The Bible is speaking to us the right amount, right when we need it, when we need it, if we need it. 
So look, this is the way we need to listen to the word of God. So Ephesians chapter 1, as, as a prisoner of the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Somebody say, I've been called. I've been called. Say it again. Are you living a life that's worthy of that calling? You know you're anointed. We just read, we just, we just sang the song. Now I'm anointed to share the news of what Jesus has done in our lives. You've been anointed. You know that? Live a life. This is now, Paul is turning a corner. He's saying, I told you a lot of concepts. I told you a lot of blessings. I told you all the things that Jesus has done for us. Now, here's what it means. You need to start living a certain way if you've received and pondered and meditated on what God has done. He, this is what he says, as a prisoner of the Lord. This is him talking about it. He is a prisoner of the Lord. Are you a prisoner of the Lord? Are you a prisoner of the Lord? Do you know what? Your perspective. Ask yourself that. Think about that. Awesome. Beautiful. He, he is doing it. He is doing it. So he says, as a prison Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. We have received a calling and it is a beautiful calling. And he wants you to now live a certain life. Not, he's not mad at you. He's not trying to throw darts at you. He's just simply trying to encourage you. Next verse. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Hello. Now, let me just tell you something. You know, in legalistic, uh, authoritarian type groups, they will just go straight. They will go bypass the first three chapters and they will go right here. You know what you need to be? You need to be completely humble. You know what? You're not being gentle. And you know what? And furthermore, you need to be patient, bearing one another in love. That's what you need to be. Basically telling people what to do. And that's not the way the Bible is. You see, he is referring to, go back to verse 1. As a prisoner of the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. He's saying you've received something. All this stuff that I've, we've talked about in verse 1, chapter 1, verse, in, in, in chapter 2, verse 3. All the spiritual blessings we received, the boundless riches of Christ, the freedoms, the forgivenesses, the graces, the mercies, the healings, all those things we received them. The, you know, you've been seated with Christ in heavenly places. You know, you're with him. You're in Christ. You've received all these things. And now because of that, go to verse 2. You've received those things. Go to verse 2. Now, he says, you can be completely humble and gentle. Because what Jesus has given you, walk in it. Aren't you, isn't it sad that you have a lot of even leaders, people that are spiritual, religious leaders? I got to say, people that are on videos, people that are on live stream, they got all these different things. It's like, I wish they were more, I wish we could walk in humility but they're braggadocious, bragging about this, bragging about what they have, bragging about this, about, what, about how much money they have or how, much, how many people have been healed, how many people they got in their church, how many of these things. You know what? God is, these are, this, is, this is preschool rules in Christianity. Be humble and be gentle. When you minister to people, and you, and, you, and you instruct people, you're still supposed to do it in a gentle way, in a loving way, in a, in, you know, patient. You need to be patient. You, you know your best teachers throughout your life, you know what they were? They were gentle and they were patient. Do you know that? The worst teachers were the opposite of that. They were rule with an iron fist and they wanted to make things happen. No. Jesus... Our example is the best teacher in the world. He was the best teacher. And then it says, bearing with one another in love. You know what that means? That we see each other not the way the world sees each other. 
we see each other in the love of Christ. We see each other through his eyes. And when things don't go right or people are struggling with whatever they're going through, we don't get mad, mad at them or angry at them. We just say, hey, I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to pray for them that God would help them see. Obviously, they can't see if they're acting a certain way or they're behaving a certain way or reacting a certain way. There's something going on with them. So I'll tell you what. Prayer is the language of love. If you don't pray for people, you know what? I, you know what? Guess what? You don't love people. You know, nobody has to tell me to pray for my family. Nobody has to tell me to pray for people that are in my family that are struggling. Nobody will ever have to, pray, have to tell me to pray for them. You know why? Because I got love for them. God put a love inside of me for them. And I will pray for them. I will stand in the gap for them. And nobody has to tell me, hey, Anthony, you need to pray for them. Look at what's going on. No, no, no. Because of the love of God inside of us, it helps us to bear with one another and one of the ways that the language, the way that looks is through, pr through prayer. That's why we come together on Tuesday nights. We pray for each other. We pray for, you know, we're, we're all praying for you because we love you. We don't have to. We want to. We get to. We're praying. And you know what? You know this. Many of you know this because there are some, some seasons where we're praying, we're, se we're seeking the Lord, and the other season where we're sort of struggling. And, but when you were praying, when you were close to the Lord, you were praying for people. You know this. And now you know people have been praying for you. People have been loving on you. Next verse. The language of love is prayer. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There's a unity because of all that God has given us. But he says in the middle of that sentence, keep the unity. Can you say that? Keep the unity. Say it again. Now, personalize it and own it. I will keep the unity. Say it again. You cannot keep anything unless it was given to you. Unity that we have is a gift. It's a gift from God. God has given that unity. You don't have it unless God has given it. You can't keep it unless God has given it to you. Do you have you received the unity of the Spirit? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The example, the triune God, showing us an example of three persons united as one. The Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, where they talk to each other in Genesis chapter 1 and said, let us make man in our image. Let us, plural, more than one. Let us make man in our image more than one image. God has a unity that is beautiful by his Holy Spirit. And do you know there's special, something special that happens when the, when the unity of the Spirit is there? You remember the scripture? Oh, how beautiful it is when brethren dwell together in unity. He says it is like the oil that's poured out upon the high priest, Aaron, how it poured out upon him and like oil overflows over his face, his beard, and it's drenching and it's going to his clothing and it even goes down to his feet. He said it is beautiful, like that unity, the Holy Spirit. And yes, guess what it says? It says for there... God commands his blessing. You know what that anointing, you know what that oil represents? The favor of God. The favor of God. It's the sanctification. It is, he's anointed with oil. The favor of God, is he's shining his face upon us. He is, it's for all to see that he has been set aside for the Lord. When there is unity in a group of people, in a marriage, in a family, God commands his blessing and you will shine like oil is all over you. You will be glistening <laughs> in the glory of God. 
and, and it'll smooth out all the rusty points that are in your life. Anybody got any rusty joints? <laughs> we need the oil of the Holy Spirit, and it comes when there's unity. We, you know what? Let me just say, it's okay. You know, God can even transform a group of a family of porcupines. The closer you get to them, oh, no, man. It's like, I can't get next to you. You can't get next to me. Why? We're always poking at each other. We're always hurting each other. You know anybody like that? Some of you guys are like, yeah, I've been told that too myself. God can soften. God can, the oil softens. It makes us not as sharp. You know what? God needs to do that for all of us, doesn't he? You know, some of us, we need to put oil in our mouths <laughs> because our, our tongue, it's like, you know, the lengua, it's like, it's, uh, you know, we know we can cut right to the core. Some of us, we're good. It's like, <laughs> amen. Um, if God could just bring the anointing oil upon our tongue, oh, my brothers and sisters, how we would hold our tongue and then see what God does, bring healing. Do we have to say everything that comes in our mind? <laughs> While you're driving, do you have to make a certain comment about some beautiful drivers that are out there on the street? Hmm? How amazing, how smart they are. <laughs> next verse next verse there is one body one spirit just as you were called to one hope when you were called you see what he's talking about here what he's repeating what's the word repeated here one one body let me just give a little bit of um, encouragement here just say that we are one body Say it again. Do you know there are people that worship in a different way? They love the Lord. They believe in the triune, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They believe. But you know what? They don't sound like you. They don't act like you. They don't act like us. You know, but they love the Lord. And they are part of the body of Christ. Did you know that? There are people like that. I remember when we were way back in the day, in the um, 90s, we were sharing churches with, well, well, we were renting churches from a Methodist church. And um, every once in a while, their piano player would leave and they would have they want me to play the piano. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know all those hymns, you know, all those old songs. Like, you know, I don't know all those. I only know the modern stuff. You know, they said, well, you, well, well, you know, just figure it out. You know, we need a piano player. So I would go. And, um, and God touched my heart because they opened up the hymnals. They would say that the next hymn, hymn would be and the number and all this stuff. And I found myself worshiping the Lord, singing these songs, redeeming the time, saying, I can, you know what, it doesn't matter where I'm at, what kind of church I'm at, what kind of formal, not formal, whatever I, wherever I'm at. If there are songs to the Lord, I'm going to do it with all my heart. I'm going to do it with all my heart because we are the body of Christ. There is one body, one spirit. Do you know that? You belong. We are just like a, probably a little, we're probably a toenail <laughs> in light of the big body of Christ that is around the world. Let me just tell you something. I have gone around the world. I've been to Vietnam, Thailand. I've been to Muslim countries, and I've met Christians that were there. No, didn't, did share the same background, didn't share the same food, didn't share the same Christian upbringing. I go over there, hang out with them, and you know what? We are one. It's the most beautiful thing. We talk about the Lord. We talk about scriptures. We testify. It's like, wow. 
you believe in God just like I believe in God. You, you have the same hopes in him just like I do. It's, we are one body. We are one in the spirit. It is, it is, it, it is crazy. We, have, we don't share anything whatsoever except God. I look at what they're eating. It's like, I will never eat that. <laughs> You know, I looked the way they dressed. I remember there was one time we went to um, Vietnam. We were in Hanoi. We were in Vietnam, and we, um, we went to a, a, ch a church, an uh, early gathering. It was about 5 o'clock in the morning, and I wanted to go. We were so exhausted because we were flying all over the place, exhausting flying that far. It's like 20 hours just to get to the, the, this place. And, and we get there, and we're like, oh, you guys have a prayer meeting at what time? 5 o'clock. Okay, we'll go. And I went, I went there at 5 o'clock in the morning, and there was a guy um, playing on the guitar that had, like, two strings on it. The other the four strings were gone. They were out of tune. And they're singing, they're singing all these uh, old uh, Christian songs that we know here, but they're singing in their language. And I'm just like, my God, Lord. I knew I wanted to come and pray, but Lord, I didn't know torture was going to be part of it. <laughs> My God, Lord, teach him how to find a tuner or something. And, you know, it was the most horrible thing. But God brought my heart around it was because I was exhausted you know I was physically exhausted as the Lord I was there we're singing songs to the Lord and then God started bringing our hearts together and we're praying we're seeking the Lord man we're we're com we're commanding blessing we're coming breakthrough I mean you, you guys realize Vietnam is a communist country you guys realize that you know what that means they're a, a, an atheist country they don't believe in God. Communism does not believe in God. They, and the whole government, all the students, all the schools, all the people, you don't believe in God. That's part of communism. There are no churches. And here I was at this church, and they were believing God for, for, for some of their government people to become chief. Because it, this gathering had infiltrators, communist infiltrators that were there to observe and, and, and report. And, 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 and to, you know, if they needed to report on them, get them in trouble, persecute them, or whatever. They were like, Lord, save them in the name of Jesus. Save the people that are here that are acting like they're Christians, but they're not. They're just here sent by the government. And Lord, we pray for their salvation, for we pray for their, for their family's salvation. They're, they're believing God. They're praying and interceding for these people just like we would back home. And I was like, wow, Lord, these people know Jesus. We're the one body. We're one spirit. Just as you were, we were all called to one hope as we were all called to it. We are one. I was, I was so excited. Next verse. Say it, say it with me. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. God is bringing us together. God is uniting us together. Husband and wives, you guys are one. He's bringing, making you one. You guys are one. You're, you're believing. You know, all of us don't believe the same way. God is bringing us to come to the same ideas and the same places so we can all agree Next verse, one God, say it together, one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. Yeehaw! <laughs> in y'all. <laughs> God is flowing. He's using different people, different tools, different people from background, different backgrounds. And he is in it. Lord, open our eyes to show us so we don't just... So some, a lot of times we just dismiss certain things because it's not coming from something that we understand or we don't recognize or we're not familiar with. But Lord, help us to understand, is this, are you in this, Lord? Are you over all? In, are, you through, are you flowing through this? Are you going through this? God will help you recognize this. This is the life that's worthy of the calling that we've received. We are aware. We're open. All right. We're, we're done. We're done. If I can get Betsy on the, on the, on the piano so you can do some, some Liberace stuff over there, you know. <laughs> but um, 
just to, uh, be thinking about this. We are one. God is ministering to us right where we're at. Where there's a unity, there's a, a life that's worth living. There's a, something He's doing for us, and I would just say, let me just say, I'm a, I'm more of a pointer. I'm not more. Uh, I'm not a person that's just going to tell you all, everything that's in the Scripture. I could. We'll be here forever. But I don't, I don't believe that you need to depend on a person for that. I'm simply giving appetizers of what God really wants to give you and show you. And you, some of us, you need to go back to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 2, chapter 2 and verse chapter 3. And you need to revisit that and really think about it. Let it come into your heart and into your spirit. So that way you can move on to the next thing God wants to give you. Because there are so much that he's going to be showing us in the next few chapters. But let me just tell you something. You are responsible for that. Not me. I'm responsible for making sure I teach the word of God and teach you to go to the word of God. But when I stand before the Lord, and if things didn't get fulfilled in my life that he had wanted me to experience... You know what I'm not going to be able to say? Lord, I would have done this, that, and the other if it wasn't for these people at Open Gate Church. I won't be able to say that. Or if it was, I would have done that if it wasn't for my wife. Or I would have done that if it wasn't for some pastor or some teacher or whatever. No, you and I, we're responsible for our own self. Do you know that? You're going to stand before the Lord by yourself and you're going to give an account of what you did with God's blessing. Let me ask you a question. Are you blessed? Yes. What? Yes. You are blessed. You are blessed. Let the blessings flow. You know miracles are coming in your life? Yes. You know miracles are coming in your life? Let me just tell you something. Some of you need a storm. No, Lord, I don't need a storm. Yes, a storm where miracles are raining down on you. <laughs> and no matter where you go, where you turn, miracles are there all over you. It's like, look, I'm soaked. Yes, you're soaked with the miracles of God, the blessings of God. Hallelujah. All right. So we're going to, yeah, we're going to... Um, Turn the corner and pray for this morning's offering. We do have a few announcements while these guys are ready. Um, April, why don't you come on up here and um, just, <laughs> she's so excited, you know. I was like, I just love it, you know. She's so gentle. She's so, <laughs> just, be, just be real quick on it. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, Monday nights we have, can I have it, please? Yeah, she's going to get it. Uh-oh. It's okay. You, you okay. Uh, celebrate recovery, freedoms from hurts, habits, and hang-ups, which we all have, whether you want to believe it or not. 5.15 is dinner, 6 o'clock is uh, lesson or, and worship, and 7 to 8 o'clock is group. Next one. Next, please. Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning is at the Palms. And um, they're going through the book of Ephesians just like we are. And that's at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. And then uh, Tuesday night pop, 6 p.m. here at the church we, where we pray for each other. And I think that's it, right? I think it is, yeah. yeah. Thank you, April. You're so gentle. You're so kind. <laughs> Charles, why don't you come on up here and pray for this, this morning's offering? Come on, my brother. Come on, Charlie. Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Father, we just thank you right now, Father God, for this opportunity, Father God, to come before you, Father God, and give, Father God, from our hearts, Father God, Lord. Not because that we need something, Father God, but because we know that you're going to do this for your own kingdom, Father God, Lord. We, we bless those that can give today, Father God, and we bless those that cannot, Father God. But whatever they give, Father God, we ask that you bless it, Father God, that you cover it, Father God, and, and do what you, your will is for this blessing, Father God. And we thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Amen. stand together. I see the body. You are one in the spirit. And the Father is in all. He's in you all. He's through you all. Flowing. When I see that you guys are living a life worthy of the calling that you have received. That's what you guys are going to do. Not because of how great you are, but as how great he is. Not because of how loving you are, but because how loving he is. He is flowing through you. He's blessing you. And watch what God does this week. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. If you want to come up in the front and uh, get some prayer. I'll have some of the leaders here. We can pray together. But you have a wonderful week. We're going to be praying for you this Tuesday night. God bless you. in his blood.